So the most important part of any stream, video, or online meeting is actually the audio. So is it possible to get almost any microphone, even the one built into your laptop or tablet, to sound like a pro broadcast mic? The results might surprise you. In my last video, I tried my best to save the worst sounding microphone I've ever encountered on a cheap webcam using free software called OBS or Open Broadcaster Software. And you can find that video at this link. Now, in my attempts to save that terrible microphone, I came across another free, or you might say donation-based software called Voice Meter. Then I watched a few videos of people saving what I would call decent microphones like the Blue Snowball, which are USB microphones that still retail for around $60. So I wanted to try a microphone that you probably already have to save that money. So I'm going to test two different microphones, then I'll explain how to get and configure the software. Now the first one is built into a Surface Go first generation tablet and it's running Windows and this is a device that retailed for $400 when it was new. Now the second one I'll try is a set of $5 earbuds that I bought at an airport a few years ago. You know the ones that have the cheap microphone that are in the wire that kind of hang about a foot down from your ear? A variant of these kind of come with more, more or less every phone that's been equipped with a three and a half millimeter headset jack, you know, since mobile phones have been created. And they don't even have, in my case, a brand or any markings on them to know who made them. So for each of these, what I want to do is actually start with a baseline recording, then show the settings that I use to dial that microphone in using the voice meter app, the banana version. I'm going to re-record the same audio track that I used for the baseline but this time with the audio settings applied. This is the Surface Go built-in mic with default settings. I'm about two feet away from it. He clasps the crag with crooked hands, close to the sun in lonely lands, ringed with the Azure world he stands. Now I'll take a breath. Now I'm gonna see how it sounds while I'm typing and speaking. That was typing by itself. And again, this is the original Surface Go built-in mic with default settings. So I have to say here that the microphone sounds better than I actually thought it would, especially for a budget device. You know, the tonality is actually pretty good, but I find it a little dark on the low end. You might find it that way too. And the only thing I can really fault it for is something that's pretty common in nearly any condenser microphone. It's super sensitive and when you hear basically every breath or all that typing, it gets pretty loud. You know, if you've ever edited an audio track with a lot of breathing in it, it's super time consuming. Also, no one wants to hear you on a call with that much audible breathing. So let's see what it sounds like then through voice meter and see if we can tone down some of the microphone sensitivity. This is the Surface Go built-in mic processed by voice meter in real time. I'm about two feet away from it. He clasps a Greg with crooked hands, close to the sun in lonely lands, ringed with the Azure world he stands. Now I'll take a breath. You can see how it sounds while I'm typing and speaking. That was typing by itself. And again, this is the Surface Go built-in mic processed by voice meter. So in voice meter banana, I've set the color panel to be a little bit south of the horizon line, a little bit to the right, uh, so that it gets a little bit more uh, brightness to it. Under audibility, the noise gate is set to 5.0 to remove that breathing sound and also any quieter background sounds. And I've also set the EQ to have a high pass filter to remove some of the typing and desk bumping noises that you'd hear on the low end and also a low pass filter to remove any fan noise on the high end. By the way, this device, the Surface Go, is actually fanless, but there are nearby devices, in my case, with fans running. And if your device does have a fan, the low pass filter will probably help. Okay, so next we're gonna try out the cheaper earbuds with built-in microphone. So this is the microphone from the cheap earbuds with default settings, the microphone's on my chest. He clasps the crag with crooked hands, close to the sun in lonely lands, ringed with the Azure world he stands. Now I'll breathe. Now I'm going to type while I speak. That was typing by itself. And again, this is the microphone from the cheap earbuds with default settings. Now this microphone is clearly a lot more limited than that built-in microphone that was in the Surface Go. 
It also needs a bit more low end and brightness in voice meter, but it doesn't sound terrible. And you can't hear breathing or typing that much because it's on my chest. It's pretty far away from the keyboard and it's not so sensitive. So this is the microphone from the cheap earbuds processed by voice meter in real time. The microphone's on my chest. He clasps the crag with crooked hands, close to the sun in lonely lands, ringed with the azure world he stands. Now we'll take a breath. Now I'm going to speak while I'm typing. I'm speaking while I'm typing. That was typing by itself. And again, this is the microphone from the cheap earbuds processed by voice meter. So now in voice meter banana, I've set the color panel to be in the center position here, just below the horizon line on the X axis and a little bit to the left in this case. Under audibility, the noise gate is set to zero because the microphone has less sensitivity to it to breathing or keyboard sound, so I didn't need to adjust that. And I've kept the EQ's high pass filter and the low pass filter settings from the Process Surface Go built-in microphone settings. And because to me it sounded a little bit dull, I've added three decibels of boost at 200, 2000, and 800 hertz to add a little bit more lows and highs to the sound. And it could still take a bit more tweaking, but it's sounding a little bit better than it did before. So I'd say this experiment was pretty successful and voice meter can correct some pretty common audio issues. One more note here. If you do need to start with a microphone, it has to not have any constant noise, whether that's static or high pitch ringing. You know, I've tested microphones with both of those things. And since voice meter doesn't have a noise suppression filter, it can't remove those types of sounds. Now a noise suppressor can remove static or humming or whining noises, while a noise gate like in voice meter is different. You know, it sets a minimum volume threshold and basically it engages the microphone once you meet that threshold or go above it. You know, that's why it cut down that quieter breathing noise and also effectively waited for the speech to engage, you know, at, at talking level for that microphone to turn on. So now let me show you how to get voice meter and configure it for audio pass through. So first you need to navigate to vb-audio.com. Then you'll click on the audio apps tab. From there, you'll download and install two things. First, the virtual audio cable, which includes drivers to enable the audio to pass through voice meter and appear as a microphone to your PC or Mac. When you download it, as a zip file, you'll want to extract the entire zip. Then from that folder, run the VB cable underscore setup underscore x64.exe using right click and run as administrator. And once that's installed, it'll ask you to reboot. Now, I don't know if that's actually necessary, but I rebooted anyway. And next from the same website, vb-audio.com, click on the audio apps tab again, then banana, then install the app. In this case, I opted for the install button, which installs the EXE. And it will also ask to elevate as an administrator during the install. And again, it will ask to reboot. And once it's installed, you'll need to select for hardware M.1 the microphone that you want to use. Now for the audio output in A1, there are a few cable options here. Here, you'll want to use the MME colon cable input, not the WDM cable input, which for me had some audio cutting problems. So I use the MME option during the comparisons. Now in the A1 column, you can right click the EQ and from there you can set the low pass and high pass filters and modify the sound curve, kind of like I did for the cheap earbuds. Finally in menu, I selected the system tray option so that when it opens the app, the icon goes into the system tray and not on the taskbar. And I also selected run on Windows startup so that it's always running and ready for streaming or online meetings. Then in Windows and the speaker icon in the system tray, right click and open sounds and you should see activity then on the green bar on the cable output option. So click it and set it as a default microphone. If you're using, by the way, Teams or OBS, the microphone will appear then as cable output in some of those apps. So be sure to set it up there as well. So now you're all set up and remember each microphone is gonna have a different audio signature. So set the sound according to your preferences. And hopefully this saves you some money while making you sound and look like a pro in your streams, your videos, or online meetings. Now, if you like this video or want to see more gadgets and general tech tips, be sure to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching.